I feel at home uh, when I'm near the ocean. Uh, I feel like the animals and the seaweeds that I study, I kind of feel like they're my friends. Uh, I know them by name. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if I have certain sites where I know I'll find certain animals. Uh, and so it, when, I, when I go there and I take a sample and they're there, it makes me happy. This is Sarah Henkel. She is a marine biologist who studies the benthic zone. When I talk about the benthic zone, benthic is a word that basically means the bottom. Uh, and so in the marine environment, that's the seafloor. Um, so I look at organisms that live in the sediment, so buried in the sediment, um, that crawl on top of the sediment, or the fishes that tightly associate with the seafloor. I also uh, am drawn to projects that have um, a societal, societal application. And so this is really great because uh, I get to learn about the seafloor animals and I get to spend my time studying them and thinking about them and analyzing data about them, um, but it has a larger application. As an associate director of the Pacific Marine Energy Center, Dr. Henkel is responsible for all the environmental studies concerning offshore marine renewable energy in Oregon. She researches the habitat and animals that live where wave energy might be developed. She also considers the impacts that wave energy devices may have on those creatures. When I talk about wave energy, um, what I'm talking about is the capture of wave energy to generate electricity. In cooperation with other universities, Oregon State University is developing the PacWave Marine Energy Test Site. It's a test facility for uh, commercial wave energy developers to see if their devices are efficiently making energy and can survive in the kinds of waves that we have here. My role is to look at um, changes to the seafloor, the invertebrates and the fishes that might um, be attracted to the devices or displaced by the installation of the devices. And then I also coordinate other environmental research questions that um, we'll be addressing at the site, such as uh, will the devices make noise? Will this be harassing to animals? Um, will there be uh, detectable electromagnetic fields? And what might the potential impacts on the animals be? Since 2013, Dr. Henkel has been studying life in the benthic zone in preparation for the installation of wave energy devices. Along with a research team of graduate students, Dr. Henkel collects her data six miles off the coast of Newport, Oregon. When I'm looking at um, soft sediment seafloor habitat, um, I'll use two main tools to um, sample the environment and the organisms. And so one thing I use is called a box corer and it's just a box with jaws on it and we drop it off the back of the boat and the jaws close and we get up a 0.1 meter squared piece of the seafloor. The students analyze the sediment for its physical properties. And then the remainder of the um, box of mud, we sieve and collect all the organisms that are in that sample. Um, and so there we're looking at clams and worms and snails to see what kind of animals are living in the sediment. Then to sample the kinds of organisms that live on the surface of the sediment or associate it with the seafloor, uh, we'll take a beam trawl and in that we collect whatever fish or shrimp or sea stars or crabs uh, we encounter along the way. It's been really interesting uh, to learn that there are some seafloor animals that have very, very specific sediment limits. So there are some organisms that will not live in sand if there is any fraction of mud. Dr. Henkel and her team have created a bank of knowledge that will assist wave energy developers and scientists in measuring the effects that wave generators may have on life in the benthic zone. And so I'm hoping my work will help people understand uh, that there is a lot of diversity in that type of habitat and that that habitat itself is diverse and it's not all the same. Dr. Henkel's interest in maintaining the health of the benthic zone has far-reaching benefits. The work that I'm doing is really important, like I mentioned, to move forward in an environmentally responsible manner. Uh, so that's a 
good goal and a great blanket statement, um, but what does it mean for individual people in Newport? Uh, well, one of the species that I study, the shrimp I mentioned, like I said, they are very important prey items for fishes and gray whales. Uh, and those are the kinds of species that people care about. They care about uh, whether they're going to catch their English sole um, or their salmon or if they're going to get to see the gray whales. And so studying these species that are at the bottom of the food chain uh, and monitoring for changes to them uh, can help us understand if we're having impacts, uh, hopefully before those impacts are realized at upper trophic levels. We are uh, trying to develop these technologies uh, to replace energy sources that we know have large impacts on the environment, um, but we don't want to just switch out one impact for another.